are live. So, welcome to Halloween Kills. Any interest in the third movie? I mean, Halloween Kills review and thoughts. No, I. I just thought that would be a funny opening line. I don't hate this movie. I understand the people who do hate the movie. I understand why they hate it, but I don't. I. I'm not gonna lie. I did strongly consider opening the video by pretending like. You know, like, I think I'm saying the title and the words review and thoughts, but instead I'm just saying the words evil dies tonight multiple times and then, like, pretend to snap out of it and be like, oh, sorry, it's just that in this movie those words are repeated so many times that I start to forget the rest of the English language. I even wrote the words, seriously, Groot is pissed off. I, th I think my, you know, I... I I have to be careful not to do too much to alienate viewers just right off the bat. That really should come later in the video. Now, happy Spooktober. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. Also, if you're only interested in the review, that part of the video is not the whole length of the video. See its length, check the time codes in the description box. Now, I watch this in a theater because where I live, COVID is under control. If you do not live in an area where COVID is under control, please do not watch this in a theater. No movie is worth risking spreading COVID, even if you think you yourself will be safe. There's probably someone you might accidentally spread it to that you don't want to spread it to. I'm currently dealing with some back pain, but I still have a lot to say about the movies that I watch, so I'm going to speak faster until my back feels better. And... Let's see. Oh. I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and see me lower my index finger. Also, please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in this franchise, especially for the 1978 and 2018 Halloween movies since they're in continuity with this. And, right, I just want to briefly state I have watched every official Halloween movie I haven't watched like, there's apparently, like, fan movies. I, I'm i sure some of them are incredibly well made. I'm just, I, I only watch the official ones. But, yes, I have watched all of them. Despite the ongoing protests against. Anyway, as soon as I end the review itself, please note that the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for the movie and earlier entries in the franchise, and I will be discussing the ending of this movie, so, right, content warning and or trigger warning, this movie features the following, and I'm going to be discussing at least some of the potentially triggering content, mob justice slash vigilantism, torture, ableism, disability, gaslighting, mental illness, sexual orientation, drugs, xenophobia, murder, body horror, suicide, and, I, and, and grief slash mourning. Now, as a progressive, I obviously have issues with a number of horror movies, though I love many of them. I do continue to really enjoy slasher movies. Now, let's see. Also, please note, I have a tendency to sometimes, when I'm discussing a sensitive subject, use descriptive terms that I consider neutral, that other people consider negative. So if I say something that sounds judgmental, it may very well just be that I take for granted that people know I'm being descriptive, not judgmental. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. And I am not, you know, the movie has sensitive subjects that I I am not well educated on all of them. I'm going to try my best not to put my foot in my mouth, but if I at some point in this video say something that reeks of sock breath, again, I assure you, I'm not intentionally being disrespectful. Now, let's see. So, this movie is rated R. Probably should be rated NC-17. But it's rated R, and so is this video. And, let's see, yeah, I, I might swear in this video the way that they swear in the movie. Just, you know, 
if that's something that's going to bother you. Now, right. This video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. The most visual it gets is when I sometimes act something out. So feel free to watch something visual, like clips from a movie, in another tab. I won't mind. I'll know, but I mean, I won't know. Of course I won't know. I'm not spying on you right now. Yes, I sent Michael out to stalk you, but now he's not talking to me. I mean, he never was, but anyway. Anything negative I say in this video is not out of bitterness. I don't feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. It's not that I'm upset at how it compares to other movies like it, what I was expecting, the trailers and other marketing, other Halloween movies. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I said in this video are fair criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what it was trying to achieve, etc. So in a lot of ways, this movie is like Halloween 2018, so I'm not going to mention all of the things where they're similar. I'm going to talk about the ways that they're different from one another, so I'm not just repeating myself. And in order to follow this movie's plot, you will need to have watched both Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2018, and very recently at that, or you will be confused. Like, I literally just a few days ago watched the movies, and there were still a couple of bits where they're like, have we... Am I supposed to recognize that character? And I, I do... I just... I think maybe it would have been nice for, for a few of them. There should have been just a tiny little bit more for us to connect. Because, like, it's super cool. They got a lot of the actors back. Like, a lot of them. They barely had to recast anyone. But we haven't seen them play this character for 40 years you can't just show us to show them to us and have us be like oh that guy right away you have to give us just a little bit more of a yeah anyway i'm overall i am glad that this movie does rely so much on those because it does build very nicely on them but I do understand why, like, this is definitely not, if you only want, if you, if you pretend that this isn't a, you know, that, that there are no sequels to the 2018 movie, if you, you can watch just the 2018 movie, you don't need to watch the 1978 movie to follow the 2018 movie, but for, for this movie, you really do need to watch the 1978 one other, there are going to be bits of this movie where you're like, who is that and what is what is happening right now and that's ultimately i'm glad that you know i i think it it gets something interesting out of you know needing that that you know and, and i mean it's not like it's some obscure you know you're not expected to also have watched this movie that has nothing to do with you know but I do hope very few people actually go into this not knowing that they should have watched the the others. But, you know, and, and it also it helps that they're great movies. The, you know, 1978 and 2018, both of those Halloween movies, excellent movies. So, you know, this is not like... Yeah. I... Yeah. Let's see. That, yeah, that is everything I have to say about that. So, since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to say during the, this video, it is possible that I will touch my face. I want to assure you I washed my hands since the last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again before going out. And this is my very first viewing. I hit record on the camera basically as soon as I got home from the theater. So... I suppose, yeah, I will, I will, yeah, I'm going to detail the, the, I'm not going to spoil, but I'm going to give a, a brief idea of the plot of this, but I do kind of need to, hypothetically, if you're watching this video and you haven't watched the others, 
I do need to just very briefly say so. Michael Myers, serial killer, he, you know, in, in 2018, he goes back to Haddonfield to start killing it, which is where he killed people before. And yeah, the, so the 2018 movie ends with Michael being trapped in Laurie, in the basement of Laurie Strode, by Laurie Strode, who survived his original attack in 1978. So, on to this movie. With Michael still alive down in the fire trap in the basement, all three generations of Strodes on the back of the truck driving away from Laurie's house that she set on fire to burn him. A fire truck drives out to put out the fire, and it isn't long before Michael has left the trap and is again going through Haddonfield killing people. And I suppose... I'm not going to give too much more away of the plot, I don't think. So what I'll just say is, you know, there are people in Haddonfield who know that he is back, and they have no intention of letting him just go around killing people. Now, let's see, so the... Yeah, the, the, um, I'm going to briefly talk about there's this flashback to 1978, which originally it was supposed to be in the 2018 movie, and now, you know, John Carpenter suggested they remove it, and yeah, now it's in this movie, and I get the appeal. It's extremely clear that these, uh, I guess let's call them the soft reboot Halloween movies. It is extremely clear that they are made by fans with a lot of passion. And the thing is, when you're just, when you're super in love with the thing that you're dealing with, you really got to be careful that you don't just get, like, Ah, words right on the tip of my tongue. Indulgent. And that is kind of what happens. It's, I think they, you know, as others have pointed out, they do a really good job replicating the aesthetic. It, it looks like, like, if you showed, if, if you, uh, if you found someone who didn't, who had never watched the 1978 Halloween movie, and you took just the, the flashback in this movie and added it to that movie, some people would not... Yeah, that sounds insulting. Um, you might not realize. You, you might be able to sit and watch the movie and not pick up where it, it goes from one movie, you know, from a movie made in 1978 to, you know, a movie made in, let's see, 2020, I guess, that imitates the 1970s. Like, it, they, they do a really, really impressive job, but it's not really, again, you know, another, one of my fellow critics says, it's a largely unnecessary detour that detracts from the mystique of the original Halloween ending, and yeah, ultimately, they probably should have just completely removed, although I do understand certainly a snippet of it is extremely important, but I don't think they needed the entire bit, because it really does not, it does not need to be there, and they made the decision to put it right at the very start of the movie. The movie doesn't you know, you watch the trailers, it looks like as soon as the, as soon as you, you know, lights go out, the, the, you know, black screen, the movie starts playing, and immediately, just, just, immediately, you're at the end of Halloween 2018, and then it just keeps, you know, fire, firefighters show up, you know, Michael escapes the trap, and then you just move on, but instead, we have 
first this, you know, this flashback. There's a, there's a, I want to say, is it maybe a rule of thumb or something? I forget. But there's a there's a rule that says that if you can if you can pluck a scene or a it's especially if it's like a flashback out of one movie and that movie isn't made worse by it, you probably should. And if you don't need to put it you know, like if if you remove something from one movie think real hard before adding it to a different movie because there's I yeah you you can kind of tell like again having just rewatched the 2018 one like now that I've seen the flashback I'm like oh I mean yeah that is what he said so now I'm now I'm seeing the thing that he talked about you know it's it's not some like a flashback doesn't have to be this revelation. It doesn't have to be this amazing thing that completely changes the way you look at things. But ideally, like, if something doesn't make your movie better, you should probably try removing it. You know, it, it especially if it's this kind of thing, because it doesn't it doesn't build. Like we've been we've been waiting for years to see Michael Myers again. We don't want to see a flashback to 1970. We already, we know for a fact what's going to happen at the end of this. What we don't know is what's going to happen when Michael gets out of this fire trap. That's the thing that we're really desperate to see. And the thing is, you could have moved the flashback to another part of the movie and it wouldn't really have been yeah, it's just, it's, it's too bad. But yeah, we are once again in Haddonfield. And this movie actually, you know, like I said, it doesn't get to it immediately. But this movie is set in 2018. It is still the same. It is still Halloween night 2018. Like in, yeah. Halloween 2018. So, if this if this following bit is not really something that you particularly care about, I'm not gonna hold up my index finger for the whole thing or anything. But you know, feel free to skip ahead. You'll probably be able to tell when I'm done. But I'm going to very brief. I'm gonna try to be brief about it talk about how I feel about the Halloween movies. I love the original 1978 movie, and to some extent, I do still wish that it was the only Michael Myers movie. All the other Michael Myers movies, with the exception of the 2018 one and this one, are varying degrees of average or downright bad, in my opinion. I completely respect, you know, other people love some of them, that's great. I'm glad that you can sit down and watch those movies and get some enjoyment out of them. Now, in my opinion, Michael Myers should not specifically be going after members of his own family. There should not be a cult connection. Michael shouldn't be strong enough to push a shotgun through the chest of a human being. We should not know why he does what he does. We should not see his POV other than the opening of the 1978 film, the, the, the bit in 1963. He should not hold off on killing, or at least attempting to kill, basically anyone he can. He is not literally able to d disappear from sight when you're looking at him. In the 1978 original, it was that Laurie wasn't sure if he was there by the hanging laundry or not. It's not that he could literally disappear, which, you know, several of the movies after that one have him literally disappear, where there's no explanation other than I guess he can just teleport and it just I I hate it so much I I just if if you watch the scene carefully you can tell that Laurie is just she's she feels like she's seeing him everywhere she thinks she's seeing him everywhere including when he definitely isn't there 
These are not things that make the franchise better. These are things that made the franchise worse. I have no problem with Rob Zombie personally. And I have not watched enough of his movies to say whether or not he is a good director overall. But it looks like he is. He definitely is talented. He makes the movies that he sets out to make. It's not one of those things where the director doesn't really know what he's doing. Like, apparently you bowl eventually got better I've only I think I've only watched one of his movies and I've seen reviews of other his movies trust me seeing one of his movies is more than enough back when he had no idea what he was doing he legitimately had no idea what he, he like you would you would kind of see he would do things that you've seen in other movies and it's like oh no he thinks that you're supposed to do that when you're supposed to do that you know that's not what Rob Zombie is. Rob Zombie makes the movie he sets out to make. I don't think Rob Zombie was right for the Halloween franchise. I think it is fundamentally misunderstanding the, the, the moment that you even come in with the idea, let's try to explain, let's try to understand Michael. Let's figure out why he is the way he is. Let's, you know, just like fundamentally. That is that is the exact wrong thing to do. Er, earlier today, I tried to think of: is there like a good metaphor? It's like if, like, let's say that you are the parent of a young child. Let's say they're seven years old or something, and you try to, you know, you you want them to feel safe in the world, and then one day they encounter a mentally you know, a, a mentally ill person, and this mentally ill person is moving in a way or talking in a way that scares your seven-year-old child. And so, you know, you try to, what you want to do is to try to explain to your child, you know, some people have, have problems and, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with them. They're not dangerous, you know. The... You know, yeah, don't, some, someone isn't dangerous just because they're talking or moving in a way that you're not comfortable, they're used to, you know. That would be what you would want to do. That, that would be making a Halloween movie where Michael is just beyond our comprehension. The Rob Zombie approach of understanding Michael would be to tell your seven-year-old, well, you know, sometimes people just snap and they get really dangerous and they hurt. They love hurting seven-year-old children. You know, that just, it's the exact wrong approach. It, it could not be more wrong. Halloween 3 is trashy fun. I wish the series was just a bunch of horror stories that have nothing in common other than the fact that they are set on Halloween the days leading up to it. Like, I really, I just, I wish that they had not been able to pressure John Carpenter into it. I wish that the second Halloween movie that came out was the uh, I'm struggling to remember Season of the Witch. Yeah. I wish it was like, you know, Halloween 1978, Halloween Season of the Witch, and then, you know, either people were like, okay, you know what, I want you know, scary stories that are set around Halloween, they don't all have to have Michael Myers. Or they would have been like, if it's not going to have Michael Myers, it's not a Halloween movie. And for John Carpenter to be, well, I guess there's only ever going to be one Halloween movie then. Fine, if that's how you like it, you know. And maybe they could have done, like, I think there are actually spiritual successors. Uh, to trick, trick or Treat, is that what it's called? Where it's like, a, a short series of stories that are all, like, on Halloween, but are, like, you know, I, th I think that's much more interesting than getting movie after movie after movie about Michael Myers, and what happened immediately was that they tried to explain it, you know, they, they, even, you know, Carpenter himself says, you know, he was, he was really drunk, and when, when writing it, he, he, basically had to write Halloween 2. And so it was like, uh, okay, fine. Um, S S uh, Samhain and Laurie is actually 
his sister, I guess, and he he kills his his sisters, and somehow Loomis didn't know that they were siblings, even though he's been dealing with Michael for fifteen years. It's just it's it's. I do not like that movie. Not at all. If you like it, that's great. I'm happy for you. As long as you're not going to tie me down and, and force me to watch it, you and I have absolutely no... I have no problem with you whatsoever. Now, let's see. I really like that, unlike Halloween Water, this and Halloween 2018 do actually understand, you know, the 1978 Halloween movie worked for being made back then, for being released back then. You can't make a movie with that few and such goreless, straightforward kills, you know, in, in the case of H2O 20 years later and expect it to not feel underwhelming. Halloween H2O is a huge disappointment if you love stuff like Scream, I know did last summer, other 90s slashers. You know, yeah. It's, uh, the like like the Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th entries in the 90s. And let's see. Uh right. Scream 2 was okay, Scream 3 is, is, you know, it's it's meh, but Scream 1 and 4 are incredible, and it looks like Scream 5 is going to be incredible as well. I know what you did last summer, I mean, each of the films is slightly lesser than the ones that came before, and the first one definitely isn't as good as the first Scream, but I can sit down and watch any of the three right now and enjoy myself. Anyway, so I really appreciate that this and the 2018 Halloween both have many kills they're very gory and creative and i'm gonna try to speed through but it's not that often that i review a current slasher movie so i'm gonna go ahead and just speed run through my opinions of the slasher movies that i've watched which it's kind of a lot i think every single friday the 13th movie is watchable and enjoyable yes honestly even the remake. It's not that... It's obviously not... I, I would rather watch one of the first ten, or the, the verses, but... Even the remake is perfectly watchable, as long as you adjust your expectations accordingly. But none of them rise to the level of being great movies, which I would say Halloween 1978 is... Nightmare on Elm Street 6 and the 2010 remake are the only Nightmare on Elm Street movies to be less than great. Depending on when you ask me, my personal preference either lies with the two Wes Craven entries or movies 2, 3, and 4. 5 is perfectly fine. I can sit down and watch it. I love Candyman 1992 and 2021. Candyman 2 is fine. Candyman 3 is garbage. The Child's Play movies are perfectly serviceable, although Seed of Chucky is garbage. The one positive I can say about it is that I've heard some trans people view it as trans positive. That's great. I'm very happy for them. I have not watched past Seed of Chucky. Maybe you can guess why. I don't know. Maybe I will eventually. I hear that they're a lot better and, and again, that's great. The first Wrong Turn movie is fine. I haven't watched any of the sequels. American Psycho 2 is complete garbage and should not exist. And no, that has nothing to do with the fact that the killer is a woman. That's perfectly fine. But it doesn't understand the first movie at all. And it's it's one of those things, like, if you don't understand the, the movie, why are you making a sequel? The first dentist is well made for what it is. Obviously, it's not for everyone. It's very extreme. I haven't watched the sequel. I wouldn't mind watching it, but I haven't found a copy. The first Children of the Corn is great, except for the very ending. I'm not going to spoil it. I watched the second one. I remember almost nothing about it, other than like the, the church scene, which wasn't half bad. Other than that, it was just okay from what I recall. Haven't watched past that one. 
it's not really that I've been avoiding Children of the Corn movies. I just, I have never seen, like, I don't know, I guess if I, maybe back when there was a blockbuster, they might have had some of them. But other than that, I've never found copies. But apparently they're not, the, the, apparently the, the those movies are really, really bad. So, dodged a bullet on that one. My Bloody Valentine 2009 was fine. I haven't watched the original. It looks... I, I think I would probably like the original as well. Those are the English language slasher movies that I'm familiar with. I love Final Hour, or in Danish, Sister Team. And if we're talking about movies that helped inspire the genre, then I think Psycho is a masterpiece, the original one. Not the... I haven't watched the remake. But I, I don't even... Why would you buy... Why not just put the original? If you're going to do a shot for, shot for shot remake, just put the original back in theater. I would watch Psycho if they put it back in theaters. It's, it's an excellent movie. I've probably watched it at least ten times by now. In, in general, like Hitchcock. He, he really was the master of suspense. It's, it's unreal. I know not everybody feels that way, but I can still, to this day, sit down, watch not absolutely any of his movies. Certainly, there's they're not equally good, but he made a lot of really great ones. And I've seen a list of, like, movies cited as inspirations for slashers other than Psycho and Halloween 1978, which is sometimes referred to as the proto-slasher. I, I simply don't know the other movies that are called inspirations. Now, it's difficult to do sequels to slasher movies. I mean, it is with almost all horror movies, but slasher movies are in a situation where it is both very difficult to do well and very popular to do. Some of the most long-running horror movie series are slashers. As a subgenre, they're junk food. You finish one serving, you want more. I'm not above it. I love Get Out, Us, The Babadook, 1982's The Thing, Cronenberg's The Fly, but I'm not interested in sequels. But with slashers, there aren't that many where I don't want to at least look into the sequels. Before 2021 Candyman, 1992 Candyman was one, I already mentioned, 1978 Halloween, which once again, when I saw the 2018 Halloween, I felt like that one deserves to be considered canon. Only took them 40 years. And nine sequels yeah i'm not entirely sure if there are any other slashers right when when one slasher it like it can end a slasher movie can end with the death of the slasher but then how do you do a sequel well the frequent answer is there's some way that the slasher killer is brought back, which can really help undercut the excitement of the ending where he's defeated in the earlier. And then there are slasher movies that end without killing off the slasher killer. And, you know, that works extremely well in the original 1978 Halloween. And if you only consider that one to be canon, if none of the other movies are canon, then Michael is still out there somewhere. We don't know where. We don't know when. He could... You know, he can next show up and murder someone, and that's so much more exciting than seeing that in a movie. Anyway, what I'm getting at is the the ultimately it's difficult to say whether I think that it's good that this sequel exists, the sequel to 2018 exists, because it really yeah. that is the thing, like. You can basically just pretend that the 2018 one, that that's where it ends. You know, like with the 1978 one. If you watch this one, you're going to have to watch. You, you can't really pretend that this is the end. It's it's very, very clearly not the end. And, you know, some of the issues with this movie might be fixed when the the, you know, supposedly the next one is going to be the final one. Halloween ends. I that that is that is both a title and a promise.
now. So I watch and video review pretty much every single entry in an ongoing horror movie series, hence why I review this, the 2018 one, Candyman 2021, that I'm already following, that goes to theaters. But this and those two are among the cases where I was really looking forward to, and I might have chosen to watch it, even if it wasn't something I was already going to watch. But I tend... It takes a lot to get me to stop watch, stop following a franchise once... Uh, yeah. I mean, I, th I think... Th at this point, I've pretty much proven I'm willing to pretty, no matter how bad a Halloween movie gets, I'm still going to watch the, the next one, you know. Like, four, five, six, seven, eight, like, they just got worse and worse. Okay, you know what? The seventh one, it has some good things, but other than that, they just, yeah. Now. Let's see. Yeah, this is a pretty good modern slasher. Now, so it's pretty terrible that I have to say the following, but some people won't watch this movie if they aren't assured of the following. No, not every straight white cis man in this film is depicted as being evil, inferior, etc. There are multiple major characters that fall into those categories that are not depicted in a really negative light. Now, I rewatched Halloween 2018 yesterday, Halloween 1978, the day before that. So the 2018 one, I've now watched three times total. I continue to love it. The one from 1978, I must have watched at least three dozen times by now. I've actually owned it on DVD. Let's let's see. Is it twenty three years by now, or something? Uh, some somewhere around that. And I still jump at every single scare. I love every second of it. I'm not saying it's flawless. I talk about the few issues, you know, with that movie in my old videos on it. Now, of course, you are not legally allowed to make a Halloween 2 movie without featuring Laurie Strode injured in a hospital as well as start right after the previous movie ending. I love horror movies, I love slasher movies, and while I acknowledge that not every movie needs to be some big world-changing thing, it does sometimes bother me that slasher movies, especially slasher sequels, are just so disposable. You can watch one, you can watch ten, very little will particularly change except for some of the newer ones like the Scream movies you know the, the for a lot of these movies like the killer is on basically unstoppable anyway so you're just waiting for a sequel to resurrect him no matter how badly they killed him in one of the movies like I, I did actually remember you know some of the hmm, I guess I shouldn't yeah it's kind of a spoiler I'll just say I've watched at least one slasher movie sequel where literally, like, one of the survivors of one of the movies, you know, becomes aware that the killer survived. And they're like, but we, like, I, I don't know, was it like burned your, your bones or something like that? And the, the killer is like, I never said that would kill me or something like that. And it's like... But that was kind of the point of that movie, though. Like, we th we thought that was going to be it, you know, but yeah. Now, I, did, I want to very briefly say, when I was younger, before I watched very many of these movies, there were, like, you would hear stand-up comedians say, you know, oh, why do they just make such stupid mistakes when they know there's a killer out there, but that's actually the thing. A bunch of these movies, until close to the end, if any character realizes that there's a killer loose, that character, you know, the yeah, the characters who realize there's a killer out there are killed before they're able to warn anyone. 
for a lot of them, it's only like the last 10 or 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes sometimes, that like everyone that is still a lot, like, yeah, that there are characters running around who know that there's a killer out there, who, who doesn't, you know, who isn't killed within minutes of finding out that there's a killer. But that actually is, you know, this movie, it's revealed fairly early on, and it's, it's, I'm not going to say that the, you know, for sure this movie has some issues, but I do really appreciate, like, that, you know, the, this is made by people who know this subgenre, and, like, off the top of your head, if someone, like, if, if you, if, if there's something that bothers you about slasher movies, you know, some, some of the first stuff that comes to your mind is that we have these characters running around that somehow don't know that there's a killer out there, even though we, the viewer, know for a fact that that's what's going on. So that's kind of frustrating. No one is armed and, like, ready to go up against the killer. And people don't, like, work together to stop the killer. And all three of these things, this movie does try to fix. And, yeah, I... I definitely appreciate the effort. I don't think it works out quite as well as they had hoped, but anyway, the thing to do is for the movie, the slasher movie, to also have something to say. So a major aspect in this movie is this mob chanting the words evil dies tonight and how dangerous they are, including to people other than Michael Myers. Some people interpret this as commenting on the Charlottesville rally. It couldn't be January 6th since the movie was no longer filming when that happened. And the, the misguided anger felt at the Charlottesville rally, where they're trying to intimidate Jewish people when they are not the cause of their problems, especially not as a people in general. Jewish people are individuals just like all other people. Some people have said that the movie is confused since Michael Myers is in no way innocent. So, you know, it does make sense for the mob to target him. I think the idea is to say that, you know, you have to be careful about things like that, that you might accidentally, you know, go after someone, you know, p people who are not responsible for your problems. I don't think that the movie is at least intentionally saying that forming a mob to stop a serial killer is equivalent to being terrified by progressive politics and targeting minorities. If they, you know, if that was what they were basically intentionally doing, then I agree. That's silly. That does not make any sense. I also saw uh, someone say, you know, it's basically the movie's trying to grapple with how a lot of Americans feel like the system has failed them recently, and I could definitely see that in there, yeah. Now... Of the things that makes the original so terrifying is that we don't know why is Michael is killing, but he also kills he kills anyone that he could get away with killing. In the first movie, if Michael doesn't kill a character, it's simply because he isn't alone with that character in a place where he wouldn't be seen killing them. Halloween 2018 does the same thing. The only person in that movie he intentionally spares is an infant. And yeah, this movie also, like, if if Michael gets near you and he is able to, you know, like the, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give an example from this movie that might spoil, but, you know, in both 78 and 2018, like, I, I remember a commenter on one of my old videos said, you know, I don't think it was not here on YouTube. I think it was back when I'm to be allowed commenting on message boards. He was like, well, the, you know, you're wrong because Michael didn't kill, you know, Lonnie. If he, if Michael had tried, like, what was he supposed to do? Like, pick up, you know, yeah, Lonnie, you know, bumps into Michael 
in the 1978 one. Is Michael supposed to just like pick him up and like, I don't know, put him in the car or something and just hope nobody notices? That's, he wouldn't be able to get away with that. You know, it's broad daylight. You know, it's a school. There's definitely going to be someone who, who notices, you know, some, some like helicopter parent that's like, you know, they, they show up half an hour before the kid gets out of class just to make sure, you know, cause, cause you never know, you never know. So it, it would have been noticed. And in the 2018 one, you know, he bumps into, or yeah, some, some trigger triggers kids bump into him again he doesn't do anything to them because it's not broad daylight but they're out in public like you know the people a, a bunch of people are inside their houses just waiting for someone to come trick-or-treating and you know if they happen to look out the window and see this big guy picking up kids for you know they're gonna like call the police or run out screaming or something you come up with a with a weapon now so others have pointed out that this movie has what Roger Ebert RIP referred to as an idiot plot he actually specifically did say it of the halloween the the yeah halloween 2 movie from 81 but you know to be fair to that movie i can't believe i'm being fair to that movie Laurie did make several terrible decisions near the end of 78, the one from 78 as well. Although, I think there it's supposed to be that she's just, she's scared out of her mind. She's not making rational decisions anymore. Where in, in Halloween 2, it's like, why are you doing that? You're not, you're not scared. You should know better than what you're doing. Like, the bit where the cop gives a radio to a nurse who doesn't know how it works, and he's just like, no, 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 it's, it's fine. And it's like, either explain to her how the thing works so that this thing will actually have a chance of succeeding, or don't leave her just like, it, it's... I've done entire videos talking about how bad that movie is, so I'm not going to do it here. But yeah, the idiot plot... In order for the plot to work, everyone has to be an idiot. And it is especially egregious in this movie, but then I don't know how else this movie could possibly accomplish the monumental body count that Michael Ranches Ranches Ratches up. And clearly that was more of a priority for filmmakers than characters that make smart decisions. It does stand out more than a little, considering, for example, the excellent horror movies that Jordan Peele writes and mostly directs, each featuring at least at least one instance of a horror movie character realizing they're in a dangerous situation and actually thinking rationally, not doing the stupid thing that the audience is yelling at the screen for them not to do. You can still have compelling horror. Get Out, Us, and Candyman 2021 are some of the scariest movies I've ever seen. To be fair, they are also very different from this one, but, you know, Us is partially a slasher and Candyman is a slasher, so, yeah. You know, that was the, they chose a, a very high body count instead, and that is also why, you know, the, the message aspect of the movie feels somewhat awkward. So... I took some notes from my rewatching of the 1978 one two days ago. Michael's heavy breathing is very creepy, and it's actually the closest he comes to saying a single word. The movie avoids explaining a lot of things, so we can get away with it. We don't know how the inmates of the mental institution got out. We don't know how Michael learned how to drive a car and where to go to get back to Haddonfield. These are questions that the movie does not need to answer, and it's better if we don't get answers. And... Michael Myers is relentless in stalking his targets. If he wants to kill you, he will keep trying to. Writer director John Carpenter captures the voices of teens and kids. He clearly respects them and their priorities. The movie is very minimalist, very few settings, very few characters. The movie's scarier for it. It wouldn't work for absolutely all movies. The Thing is a much more complex movie and is all the better for it. 
so this movie, Halloween Kills, has been getting slaughtered by critics. And yet, I remain hopeful. What can I say? I'm an optometrist. A real bath half full kind of guy. Where others see dark clouds, I see only blue skis. Now, some people question how the fire department got there so fast. It's like, you know, the, the fire department showing up, it's supposed to be like maybe a couple minutes after the, you know, like, you know, they set the building on fire, then they ran out, got on the this truck, uh, what's it called? Yeah, the, the back of this truck thing, and they're, you know, they're driving away, and then the fire department comes. I think the, the fire department is just not very far away from Lori's place. And, you know, I, th I think I also saw someone say, well, I mean, clearly the Strodes didn't call the fire department, so who did? I would guess the guy driving them away in the truck. I mean, they didn't, like, tell him not to. He was very close to the house. Maybe he smelled the fire. Maybe he saw the flames, you know, something like that. I mean, for all he knows, they are freaking out specifically because the house is on fire. You know, I mean, if, if three women covered in blood, at least one of them holding a bloody knife, walked up to you and, and you know, said, please drive us away from here, you know, you try to figure out, what, okay, what's what's going on here, what, you know, and so, yeah, you know, he, he figured that whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever happened, it has something to do with that house being on fire or, you know, or he's just like, well, there's a house on fire. Of course I got to call the, the fire department, you know, so. But uh, no, seriously, rewatch the end of Halloween 2018. They don't tell him, let that thing burn. They just, they go up to him and say, please get us away from here or something like that. I feel bad for the writers and for Judy Greer and really even for the fictional character, you know. When they decided that her character name should be Karen in the 2018 Halloween movie, as far as I'm, as far as I've been able to tell, the word Karen, the name Karen, was not yet an insult. But you know, some people do say that she behaves like a Karen in this movie. I don't know. I guess I can see it a little bit, but I I found her to be tremendously sympathetic. One of the few criticisms I have of Halloween 2018 is that I do think that some of the time horror scenes would feature some jokes that would take away from the tension. You know, I, I don't mind jokes in horror movies. It, it's only because they took away from the tension. And that was also occasionally an issue here. Like, there would be something scary, but then there'd be a joke, and it would kind of counteract... The, yeah. And it's not like you can have both. Both of them can work together very well. Now, Halloween 2018 imitates Halloween 78 a lot. This one, you know, it, it references the 78 one a lot. But it doesn't really imitate it that much. And I'm glad because, at, you know, if they kept doing it, it would feel like a retread. I mean, I feel like Halloween 2018 was almost like a proof of concept, kind of like they were they were saying, no, 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 look, it's possible we can make a Halloween movie that feels like a Halloween movie that that's actually satisfying, you know, because again, that's the thing, like the more, I guess, yeah, I th I think by the end of Halloween four. We've basically reached that's 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 the last time it was very Halloween Halloween four and Halloween seven. But other than that, like Halloween five, a psychic connection that that feels completely like there's nothing in in the you know, yeah. In in the first movie there's no suggestion that there's a psychic connection between Michael and his sister. In the second movie, we're told that Laurie is his sister. There's no evidence of a psychic connection. 
it's, you know, so, so, yeah. And then the sixth one, like, I get it. The, the cult stuff partially inspired, you know, as far as I understand, it's pronounced Samhain, even though it's not, yeah, the, the spelling, yeah. I'm just gonna, there's gonna, I think there might be people confused if I don't just spell out it. You know, in the second movie, it's spelled on the blackboard like we would think it would maybe be pronounced Sam Hain. And I think in the movie they do pronounce it like that. But apparently in in its original language, it's pronounced Samhain. So, you know, that's how they got the cult connection thing. But, you know, and then you have the eighth one with... It 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 hurts to say. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to get it get it out of my system. Reality television. They 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 tried to blend reality television and Michael Myers. Yeah, it it's just the the yeah they they got so far away from it. It it didn't feel like. And again, I'm not gonna. Spend forever criticizing the the Rob Zombie movies. All I'll say here is, they were very different. They did they did not feel like. I f I f if they had just called it something else, if every character in there was named something like, if Rob Zombie put out a couple of movies about a little kid who's tormented by his family and bullies at school and you know the authorities at school, authority figures at school, and all this, and, and snaps and goes around killing family members and such, as long as it wasn't called Halloween, as long as that kid wasn't referred to as Michael Myers, I'd be fine with it. But, Halloween 2018, you know, they proved, no, it can still be done. We can make a movie that feels like a Halloween movie. And then with this one, they were going to do a different thing. You know, they weren't just going to do that again. And I'm really glad that they did. I, I don't think the final product is as good. I'm, I'm not going to try to hold it to a standard of, oh, is it as good as the 1978? I mean, of course it's never going to be. At best, you could say a spiritual successor. But the moment you make a sequel to that original movie... You take away a huge part of the impact of that movie. Like, the best way to watch Halloween 1978 is to pretend that there is not a single other movie that features Michael Myers. Or at most, it's that he's a fictional character and the movie Halloween is a piece of fiction like in Season of the Witch. But anyway, yeah, I, I really appreciate that they took some chances here and... I'll be very I'm very interested to see what how they're going to conclude this whole thing next year. Now, I've seen others say this movie cuts too much between too many different characters, even back and forth chronologically, it gets confusing and kills attention. I got to say I thought it was going to be way worse than it actually was based on what I read, but that's the, you know, no matter how bad a movie is, if you read enough negative reviews, you might end up thinking it's worse than it is. If it's and and vice versa for for a good movie, but the the yeah, unfortunately it's it's true. There there are definitely too many characters in this, and I think the whole flashback thing was probably just a mistake. I think the movie would be better if you removed all the flashback stuff. Nah. And and the you know the movie essentially doesn't have a main character like and and certainly the the stro the three Strode women are not you know you can't point to one of them and say oh she's the main character you know and the 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 twenty eighteen movie was very fo you know the seventy eight movie Laurie Strode is the protagonist the twenty eighteen movie. I'm not sure I would say, is she the protagonist? Uh, she has a lot of screen time, 
the movie is very focused on her pain and what her pain, the, her trauma, which was caused by Michael Myers, how that affected the family, you know. And then in this movie, it's like it, we're gonna we're gonna see how the trauma that Michael caused affected the entire community, and it just it's a good idea. I feel like this is the kind of thing that would work incredibly well if it were a novel, maybe a miniseries, but as one movie, it's, yeah, you gotta be careful with this many characters, and ultimately, like, a handful of these characters, it's basically, like, this movie expects you to already care about them, because they were in the 1978 movie, or, you know, for yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. M most of them, it's because they were in that movie, and they even got the actors back and everything, you know, and it's just not as... Ultimately, this, this movie would have been better if they had just... You know, I, I think an argument could be made that Tommy Doyle might be... And no, no, he doesn't quite have enough. No, he is one of the main, main or major, major characters for sure. And you know, some some people really thought that it was a huge mistake. With I, I thought that there was some really. I, I felt that he was still sympathetic, despite some things that I understand why others felt that you could no longer sympathize with him. Now, in Halloween 2018, Allison is smart like Laurie was in 78, and, I mean, in this movie, most, other, yeah, most of the characters will at some point in, if, if a character appears in this movie, they will make at least one really big mistake. Now, let's see, I know I bring this up a lot in videos, but when I talk about Halloween 1978 and I spoil that movie's ending, but I just gotta say one more time, apparently Laurie has a severe allergy to knives, not to mention to actually checking if Michael is dead instead of turning her back on him. I, I get it, it's because, you know, obviously for several of them, you really don't expect him to be coming back. You really thought that was gonna be it. You know, he, he falls down, and then she turns her back on him, and he sits back up. And it is creepy, but it is the kind of thing where, like... <sighs> yeah. Anyway. I am gonna scroll through... To find... Yeah, I copied in a lot of stuff. I didn't... I wasn't sure how much I was going to Let's see. Oh right, the the yeah, some at least one critic said, you know, oh what's the point of like ripping off Michael's mask? I mean, unmasking him briefly in the 1978 film did make him stop in his tracks. I, I really don't, uh, yeah. I feel like sometimes people write these kind of things without really going back and looking at, like, I. if if the 1978 film is fresh in your mind, which to me is all, always the case, I don't understand how you could be saying, well, what's the point of taking off the mat? Like, now. I think. Yeah, some point out that the dialogue is really not very good. Like, they try to make, like, this... Like, a lot of characters will make these really declarative statements about the, the you know, what Michael is and why he does what he does and such. And the, yeah, it's, it's not great writing the the actors do what they can to deliver them well but now that is Let's see. 
So this is far from right. Some people call this movie the Empire Strikes Back of this trilogy. I saw one person say that it's it's this trilogy's Infinity War, which I mean, I can see what they mean. So this is far from the first Halloween movie made to ensure they could keep making at least one more after it. That's also true of Halloween 4, where the new killer would be Jamie, not Michael, although then they back, you know, went back on that. 5, 6, 8, and 2018. Some of them more subtle about it than others, but all of them accomplished that. The only ones to make it look like Michael dies at the end are 2, 4, 7, 2007, and 2009. And really, the only ones that make it ridiculous to bring back Michael are 2, 7, and 2009. And, yeah, I don't, you know, some people really hated the ending to this movie. I thought it worked. I, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm just really briefly gonna say, Heavy Spoilers did a video analyzing the ending. Not gonna spoil anything here, but... If you, yeah, if you've watched this movie, I recommend his video on the ending. I, I thought he had some really interesting analysis. Now, the idea that Michael has a significant effect on the people of Haddonfield was actually part of one of the several unproduced scripts for Halloween 4. Of course, that one also had several supernatural moments that this one doesn't. I feel like they took the part that they could make work, same as how this one has a mob going after Michael and, you know, yeah, the, the, that they have some, some difficulty figuring, you know, determining if this really is the, um, what's the word? Yeah, but, you know, movies that point out that a mob can be dangerous, you know, that does, does also happen in Halloween 4. But yeah, like, the, the idea that Michael's evil has had a major effect on Haddonfield, the town itself, I, that hasn't really been in any of the previous produced movies it's it's only in you know which shows like that means that the people who wrote this i don't know you know three different people wrote this i don't know if they came up if it was one of them if all three of them you know i don't know who came up with the idea exactly but whoever did they had actually read oh you know here are some ideas for the halloween four you know, here's some Halloween 4 scripts I, and their ideas and yeah, like they figured that could, yeah, that's that's a good idea, it's just you know, I don't think anyone would have been happy with, like I've, I've yeah, I've already said, I don't think that Michael should come back you know, but I would also not have thought that like, if I recall, it was basically just, was it the ghost of Michael, or just, like, in that unproduced Halloween 4 script, you know, Michael was basically, like, Michael didn't show up in the flesh, and I definitely do think that would have been disappointing. I don't think very many people would have been happy with a sequel that is in canon with Halloween 1978. But where Michael himself doesn't directly show, up. I, I, I gotta say that was that was misjudged, and I really don't blame the people in charge for not putting, you know, what what's the word, putting that script into production. Now, this was written by several people. David Gordon Green who I have to admit, I don't really know any other, like, yeah, I'm just going to say the other stuff he wrote. 
So you know if you if you your know some of this stuff, maybe that'll help inform your decision on whether or not this will be worth watching. But yeah, other than this, Halloween 2018. The 2016 movie Goat, 2013 movie Prince Avalanche, 2007's Snow Angels, 2004's Undertow, 2003's All the Real Girls, and 2000's George Washington. And it was also written by Danny McBride, who's more well known as an actor than a, a writer. I, I'm I've barely seen him in anything. I think. Wasn't he in that Alien Covenant movie? But, you know, I don't know. It's I, I don't think his kind of comedies are really my kind of thing. That's why I have, I have no problem with the people that enjoy them. I mean, Natalie Portman appears in at least one of them. If it's good enough for her to appear in, then I am definitely not going to say that it's that I'm, like, so above it or anything. Because she tends to like really you know she doesn't just pick any movie that anyway but yeah Danny McBride who also wrote the 2018 Halloween movie he wrote the 2018 The Legacy of a White Tail Deer Hunter Your Highness which I think is the one Natalie Portman is in and 2006 The Foot Fist Away and the third person writing was Scott Teams who did not write he he didn't do any writing for 2018 Halloween so maybe that they were thinking like we got to get someone else in you know get some new ideas like how they would get new writers in for each season of like alias or was it every season or was it just every so I, I forget anyway but yeah other than this he wrote the 2020 movie the quarry and the 2009 movie that evening sun but yeah like i said i don't know i haven't watched any of these movies so so in the 2018 movie the writing was quite good i would say largely the writing is good here it just it does have some issues like dialogue definitely uh, yeah and it is the kind of like a character in a slasher movie making a bad decision so that the the script can facilitate more death you know that's that's Tuesday that's that happens all the time give because they wanted a really high body count in this one there are a lot of those for just one movie. Like the, it's it's kind of like if you if you fast forwarded through a bunch of like thirteen, yeah, Friday the Thirteenth movies or something, you know. Now, right, and given that this movie is still Michael Killing, not one of the Strodes, which, you know, that was the thing. Like the twenty eighteen movie. You know, I I would guess it's simply they you know they they what's the word called tested the waters they you know put a finger up to to tell the the you know which way does the wind blow and people wanted more Michael Myers and I completely understand that but I do think it was really cool how like yeah at the end of the 2018 one like hypothetically you know the next movie it could be maybe Lori snaps, maybe Karen snaps, maybe Allison snaps, maybe one or more of the still on the loose escape mental patients are, are dangerous. You know, that is something I really do appreciate that this movie clearly, you know, they, they, they looked at the negative reception to the, I'm going to come right on and say the ableism of the 20, like, Holy crap, guys! Did you really not realize that you can't depict mentally mentally ill people like that anymore? That's just that's not okay. That's wow! You are like twenty years off here. This is this is stunning. But they they did what they could with this movie to to try to address that. 
this movie features a you know a, a mentally ill person who's very clearly not actually dangerous and actually calls out people like thinking he's dangerous because he's you know yeah so so but yeah the the let's see yeah you know these these really interesting ways to follow up you know other than yeah michael myers still being the killer is the least interesting path and it seems unlikely they will take a risk like that you know yeah you know now now that they've affirmed okay it's it's michael you know I would be extremely surprised if the third movie actually tried to do, like, I mean, with, you know, with the fourth movie, like, the way Halloween 4 ends, the fact that the next movie doesn't have, like, that Michael is back, and it's not that the, the, it's not that it's now Jamie who's the killer, like, it's, it's, I think they really, they had something interesting there. It would have been interesting if they actually stuck with that. The idea that when Michael died, the evil left his body and went into Jamie's body. Like, that's, yeah. But then they, you know, they chickened out and, and I mean, I get it. I get that, you know, oh, they, they've, it was deemed a bit too too much to have like it there's there's obviously a difference between having this one brief sequence where it's six year old eight year old i want to say he's eight i believe he's eight yes an eight year old is a you know a killer ki kills a family member and then like i mean i don't know was all of halloween 5 supposed to be Jamie going around killing people, but, and anyway, ultimately, I do think that this movie does, like, the fact that it has this mob thing, the, the that element of the script, and trying to comment on mob justice, you know, if they had also, like, I feel like that's what they did because they took the least interest, like, they couldn't make Michael that interesting. Or rather... Yeah, they yeah they had to do something to be interesting. Now that Michael was going to be the killer, after they had such a potent... Like, you could have opened this movie right after the ending of 2018. And have it be that, like, Allison turns to face her mother and grandmother. And at first, they're just, like, they're confused. And then she raises up the knife. And they're like, no, no, not you, you know. And she, like, stabs them. To, like, there, you know, that would be incredibly just, like, because you, you've spent so much of the 2018 movie you know, she's, like, she's happy, she's with her friends, she's smiling, she's dancing, and to then see her become the killer, because she seemed, I guess, innocent might be a little too, but she, she seemed, she seemed good, you know, and that is, like, the, the, one of the incredibly scary things about Michael is, it seemed like he started out good, like, his, his sister and his parents were so surprised when he son like you know when his when his parents come home and pull off the mask and see him standing there with a bloody knife they're not like i knew this would happen they're like michael you know just the 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 tone of the voice like the reaction like i i feel like to to michael's parents they might as well have just witnessed him floating through the air or something like they can't believe what they're seeing. It's Michael. It's their adorable little eight-year-old boy who's sweet and kind and good. You know, that's the that's the sense I get from just the intonation of that one word, you know. 
And yeah, it, it, you know, it's probably not going to happen now. It's not, not with this franchise at least, but you know, that is, that is something, I don't know, I guess it's possible that Halloween Ends does some sort of like hint that that will be, but you know, part of the really interesting thing is like, you know, with Michael Myers, he didn't like, you know, poof into existence out of nothing. No, he was, he was apparently a normal kid for eight years, and then one night on Halloween night, he snapped, and nobody knows why. You know, Loomis spent what was it seven years trying to figure out why, and then the next eight years trying to make sure that Michael would never be able to get out. You know, so, but but yeah, I. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I get it. I, it's, it's really difficult. Like, it's one thing if you just, if you start off something else entirely, and then, like, you could maybe have something about that. Yeah, like, like, instead of a Halloween sequel, it's just, it's a spiritual successor. But now the killer from the start is, like, for example, an eight-year-old girl, or you know, I don't know, is, is Allison supposed to be 16, maybe something like that, you know, and we're, we find out that, oh, the backstory is that, you know, they, they faced this serial killer that also snapped when they were a, a young, you know, yeah, let's go with the word innocent person, and now it's the, but, but the moment that the word Halloween appears, you kind of expect it to be Michael Myers, you know. Let's see. I am gonna... Right, so... Plot twists. I mean, ultimately, there aren't... There aren't very many plot twists. I thought that they were fine. I wouldn't say that they're like amazing. The the it's the right amount. I don't know that uh there's maybe at least one that's a little too easy to figure out for the viewer. So, the direction, so yeah, David Gordon Green directs this, and again, this and 2018 Halloween are the only ones of his that I've watched, but I'm just real quick going to go through the list. Stronger, Our Brand is Crisis, Manglehorn, Joe, Prince Avalanche, The Sitter, Your Highness, Pineapple Express, Snow Angels, Undertow, All the Real Girls, and George Washington. So yeah. He, you know, like a handful of the movies he's directed, he also helped write or wrote, I, I forget which ones, I think, yeah, I, I forget if he, if, if he was the sole writer on any of them, but anyway, so yeah, the, the opening of this, like, before the the opening credits and the flashback, we get this brief bit that very quickly puts us back to you know in in the in the events of the 2018 movie. The opening titles are absolutely amazing. Like it's, I didn't know how they were gonna top like. The 1978 one, it's minimalist. You, you, like, if they hadn't done it back then and you tried to do it today, people would probably say, ah, that's too small. People aren't going to accept it. But back then, you know, they didn't have that much money. So they made a very minimalist, and it works. It's, it is tense and, and just the, the music does a lot of the, the leg work. But yeah. And then the 2018 one, has a more intense, you know, version of, of the music from the 1978 one. And it has this thing where, like, they, I mean, they basically filmed a pumpkin 
like, I, I don't know, I mean, I guess maybe they had it, like, on, like, they had a, had, uh, what's it called, a candle inside of it for a really long time, so it kind of melted, and then they just re, you know, they filmed that, and then they rewound that footage, so it kind of reforms, and it's just, yeah, and then this one, there's, like, yeah, it's, it's not a spoiler, they're jack-o'-lanterns, so of course there's going to be, like, lights inside, but they almost look like they're kind of on fire, like, like I got a real set, like, they reminded me of the visual of, like, a skull on fire, you know, this, this really dark, twisted v visual, you know, and, yeah, and, and I think they got the right, the, I think they got the, the same font and and color and everything and just yeah if it's if you can make it this good then yeah please do put a an opening title sequence in your horror movie because it's yeah and and yeah to me like like i said i just a couple of days ago watched rewatched the 1978 one and even even after all these viewings, I'm still like on the edge of my seat, just even just for the opening credits. Like, it's the yeah. Now, I am not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, it fits with what came before. I am largely happy with how the movie ends, it doesn't really have like Deus Ex Machina, other convenient writing. You know, the, the ending to a horror movie is extremely difficult to get right. It's just, it's, it's so unbelievably difficult to get it exactly right. And I think this one does a lot right with the ending. And... Yeah, the, you know, one of the only weaknesses of the 2018 Halloween movie is the climax. It's, you know... It's probably the hardest part of a slasher movie, and uh, there are definitely disappointing aspects of the climax in this movie, but I do think overall that this movie does a better job of, of the climax. I felt like it made more... I, again, I, I feel like, like, I think, you know, they read the comments, they watched the YouTube videos, and... A bunch of people were like, I mean, I love the movie, but wow, that, that climax, that was kind of, you know. So they, they tried to do a better job here, and in some ways they definitely did. You know, just, just to very briefly say, like, the, the, the 19, the 1978 movie ends, like, a, yeah, I already mentioned, you know, I did. I find it frustrating that Laurie makes such bad decisions, some, in the climax. But it also is, like, in that movie, you, you, like, you basically, you, you keep figuring, I mean, this has to be the thing that stops him, right? You can't, he can't keep getting up after, you know, being stabbed, being shot. And then in the 2018 one, it's like, okay, so Laurie has had 40 years to prepare for this. And she's been extremely careful, and just immediately, all of her, all of this preparation, like, she immediately, immediately, it looks like it fails. And I think some of it is supposed to be, like, she's trying to get him, what's the word, He it's trying to get him to lower his guard, so that the trap will work. But I do think it could have been done without being as... Like it's it suddenly feels like she's making incredibly obvious mistakes, and yeah, and I with with this one, some of the way they do a better job. Now, as far as I know, there is nothing after the the end credit. Like once the end credits start rolling, you might as well leave the theater. Honestly, the staff will be very grateful if you do. You know, I I googled it. It, it said that there was nothing, so I walked out as soon as the end credits started rolling. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the movie loses your interest along the way, but there definitely are 
parts where you're not as engaged as you could be and like i i was like please you know let it, i i'm here for this just just keep going you know and it would like it would jump to a different location and characters that i just didn't care as much about uh, you know just yeah I would say that some yeah some parts of it are more enjoyable to watch than others and it is worth yeah you know the the it's it's worth sitting through the the parts that are not as good to get to the the really good parts now there are a number of references to the other films in the franchise. I think there might be more of, like, is there almost at least one reference to every single other movie in the franchise? I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but I, I think it at least comes close to there being one per, at, at least one per, anyway. And yeah, the you know there's definitely some fan service, but the movie does understand, you know, what the 1978, yeah, why it's uh, such an effective horror movie. And that brings us to the characters. I don't have that much to say about Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. She is in way too little of this movie, but then, you know, if you've heard that from everyone who's mentioned her amount of screen time in this movie, so. Yeah, the, the you know. Yeah, in, in parts of the 2018 movie, she's barely functioning, and, you know, in this, you don't really see... I mean, that, I guess, essentially, you know, that movie was saying that if Michael Myers isn't trying to kill anyone in Haddonfield, then she seems just like a, a broken person, but when Michael is alive and trying to kill people in Haddonfield, she has a mission. And in this, she can't, you know, be running around, you know, she was stabbed in twenty in the 2018 movie. But the... Yeah, and in, let's see, in 1981's Halloween 2, Laurie spends the whole movie in the, at the hospital, almost all of it unconscious. In 2009's Halloween 2, Laurie isn't in the hospital for all that long, but it does involve a very disorienting dream sequence where you're like, wait, what? How much of what we saw was a dream? So them taking Laurie to the hospital tells me that they're more devoted to saving her life than to ensure a good movie. This time, at first, Laurie is bedbound, not beyond risking her own safety. And yeah, as others have pointed out, there are too many characters and too many of them are for, you know they're for fan service now there are some new theories in this about why Michael is the way he is what he does with why he does what he does and that's right and I want to just briefly shout you know Mike Myers slash the shape is played by James Jude Courtney and Nick Castle and they continue to give a really strong performance. Like, it is not easy to... He walks at one speed. He never speaks. You don't see his eyes. He It's it's body language. That's all that he has to work with. But the both of the actors do a lot. Like, they really imbue him with... You know, he feels like a real... 
I guess person is the wrong word, but like he feels he feels alive. You know, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's just a person in a in a suit doing a thing for a movie. You know. Now, one of the things that makes him incredibly scary in 1978 and 2018 is that there will be situations where he'll just stand there and you just want him to move to do something, but no, he just stands there. Some of the most memorable are when Loomis shoots him and when he gets trapped in the basement of Laurie's home. And yes, this movie has at least one instance of him just standing and staring when we just, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's unbearable. Why is he standing still? Why doesn't he? Yeah. Right. And another one would be when, you know, when they pull off the mask in 1963 and he just, just stands there, you know, cause it, the, like you would expect him to maybe try to stab at his parents or try to run away or something. But he just, he's like, it's its as if the moment they pull the mask off, it's like the, the, whatever evil drives him just kind of like, you know, okay, I guess we're not going to be able to kill anyone else now. I guess we'll wait, you know, and he waited for 15 years. And that is, of course, you know, like... It is obviously really messed up. Like in in real life, there are like there are some people who have you know who who don't seem completely present. They they you know, and it is messed up to say you know oh you know what if they're like really evil in there you know. Now, let's see. right, the, the, yeah, I was a little worried that this movie was going to do the, the stupid prequel thing of over explaining the original or showing something from a different point of view, but no, it does not do that. I think I already mentioned yeah Judy Greer as Karen does a really good job uh, she's she's given more to work with here you know she she really didn't have that much to work with or to do in the 2018 one and and I think that might also be you know they a bunch of critics said I mean what what is this nothing of a character she's she should be super interesting she was Laurie's daughter. She she spent her entire life, you know, with her mother obsessed with the boogeyman. And, you know, and here she is more interesting. And Andy Matichak, is that how you pronounce it? As Alison Nelson, Karen's daughter, Laurie's granddaughter. You know, the, the, yeah, she also gives a really great performance. She's a good, like, She's the new Laurie Schrode, essentially. You know, she's this good, kind, sweet person who has friends who babysit, you know, on, on Halloween night, and she and her friends are attacked. Now, in the 2018 movie, Allison only knew about Michael through what her mother told her about her own, about her grandmother and her own childhood. She was a fairly well-adjusted, happy teenage girl. This movie shows her after encountering, encountering Michael Myers. And yeah, she has become a more hardened person. Like, she is never going to... She, she'll never be innocent again, you know. And I think both the writing and the performance are quite good. And I like seeing Will Patton as Deputy Frank Hawkins again. I thought, you know, they, they gave him more interesting things than, uh, yeah. And I, you know, Anthony Michael Hall, I liked him in the 80s stuff he was in. I haven't seen all of it. And I liked him in this. What Was he? He was in The Dark Knight also, wasn't he? I, th I think so. As a reporter or something. Yeah. I 
yeah, I think I've liked him in everything I've seen him in. I thought he was really good in this. I, you know, some some people watched this and were like, oh, I can't relate. To this. He's he's not very likable. I thought he was sympathetic. Like he's he's not intentionally doing anything wrong. He just doesn't realize how dangerous this whole mob is. But I really didn't get the sense that we're supposed to. And I I despise the Charlottes like the Charlottesville protesters scum of the earth, you know, I, I, there are not very many people who I have a lower opinion of than, than those, but he's not intentionally being like them. He just doesn't realize that that's what, you know, yeah. Now, you know, I, I quite liked, you know, it, I, I personally didn't, mind that it's not Paul Rudd, you know, the, the, um, I, I don't actually know why it's not the, the kid from the first one, you know, they, they got the, the girl who played Lindsay back, and they got the nurse, Loomis's nurse, and the sheriff, you know, in, in addition to, to, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Nick Castle themselves, but, yeah, you know, last time we saw Tommy Doyle, he was played by Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd couldn't do this movie because he did, he, you know, he was filming, I don't remember what it's called, but the, the Ghostbusters movie that, and, and I think, I've, I've only seen the trailer for that. It, that looks like it plays to his strengths. I'm not sure I would say that this role is really, like, exactly the kind of thing Paul Rudd can, but Anthony Michael Hall really sold it. I actually, I, I, it's not reminiscent of the other stuff I've seen Anthony Michael Hall in, to be fair, but I, I thought he did a, a good job. I really like, like, the last, you know, and in, in 19, in the 1978 Halloween movie, the very last thing he says is, you can't kill the boogeyman. And he says this in response to Laurie asserting that it's okay. She's killed the boogeyman, you know. He, yeah, he was traumatized like Laurie. The, the, you know, basically it's, it's the, ah, what's the word? Right, the, the, yeah, I was a little worried that this movie was going to end up overstuffed with all these, you know, returning characters, and ultimately, yeah, and yeah, Kyle Richards, you know, who played Lindsay Wallace, yeah, you know, in 1978, and now he's 40-some years later, and... Yeah, she she she's good in this as well, and yeah, it was cool to see Nancy Stevens as Marion Chambers one more time, as the you know she she appeared in the 1978 original. She reprised the role in the second movie and Helen H two O before this, and let's. See. The, I think that I'm not sure I'm going to talk more about the characters. Now, the, um, right, so, yeah, so, yeah, t Tommy Doyle is, uh, you know, one of the main driving forces between, behind these mobs that, you know, trying to find and stop Michael 
And yeah, in 1978, you know, over the course of the movie, Tommy became obsessed with the idea of the boogeyman. When you first meet him in that movie, he has a positive idea of what Halloween is, but Lonnie Elam and some other kids frighten him, put the idea of the boogeyman in his head. And, you know, throughout the rest of the movie, he's, he, he's seeing the boogeyman. And, you know, it's that thing, it, like, Carpenter is essentially using that element of, like, children can perceive evil better than adults. This idea, you know, and, yeah, throughout the rest of the movie, when he looks out the window, he sees Michael Myers, and he can tell that's the boogeyman. That's not just some random person in a, you know, like, like, Laurie doesn't think that there's anything. Yeah, anyway. It's, just, it's extremely important, psychologically speaking, for children to feel safe, to conquer their fears. Every child will at some point fear something. If they feel safe, they will conquer that fear. They will no longer fear it. But if they keep feeling that fear, it can define the rest of their life. They might spend the rest of their existence terrified of the thing that they started being afraid of when they were children. And it seems like that's basically what happened with Tommy. And yeah, ultimately, it's not as gripping as Laurie's PTSD in the 2018 Halloween movie. But I do appreciate that the filmmakers continue to have something interesting to say and or comment on. So I've seen several people question why would Michael in Halloween 2018 care about Laurie since they're no longer siblings? Well, she's the only person that he attacked in 1978 that he did not manage to kill. Considering that he's a shark, he kills, he moves, he kills again. I feel like that would probably matter to him. Now, Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2018 had characters that I didn't hate seeing despite it being a slasher movie. Did I hate the characters in this? I ultimately like I I could point to a couple of characters that I really didn't like, but by and large, no, but by and large I like the characters in this. It's, yeah, they're they're they've watched so many slasher movies that it is like you know, they, they understand how, like, there are not very many Friday the 13th characters that, I'm, I'm not one of the people who say, ah, oh, I don't like that character, I hope they die. If that's, if that's you, that's fine. It's just, I'm just saying, that's not me. That's all. But I do, yeah, for, for those movies, like, you don't really care about, you, you don't really like the characters. I'm not, for for some of them, I don't I don't think that the people who made those movies actually have a very high opinion of teenagers. Like they seem to just think, I mean, if if you watch this movie, if you think this movie is good, I guess you you're really incredibly stupid. And I guess all you care about is sex and drugs. And and okay, I guess that's fine. That's what we'll put. Like they they feel very judgmental and and kind of mean-spirited some of them it's just yeah i just i think there's a world of difference between several of those movies and then you know halloween 1978 now that let's see. so yeah this is another movie where you know, we see some of the characters in tremendously varied circumstances. We see what they're like when things are going well, how they respond to things going wrong. Uh, you know, at, at the very start of the movie, the three Lori women, the three Strode women, all believe that Michael is dead. And so we see what they're like when they think they won. And then we see them react to learning that he's still alive. And yeah. Now, I would definitely say some of the kills are going to stay with you long after watching. Now, the, the cinematography, the DP is Michael Simmons. And, you know, the only other things I've seen him DP 
our Halloween 2018 and Paranormal Activity 2. Now, the... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and quote a fellow critic here. In terms of its filmmaking, Halloween Kills is a compelling horror delight. It plays heavily into the audience's fear of darkness as cinematographer Michael Simmons blasts strong beams of light to contrast the emptiness of each scene. Despite being clearly modern, a large majority of Simmons' visuals evoke Dean Cundey's original style. The frequent use of zooms elevate the ongoing endless amount of dread in the atmosphere. And, and and another creative notes that the kills are filmed in creative ways, which means that despite the high body count, the you know the kill scenes remain interesting to watch. And this was edited by Timothy Alverson, who you know also edited Halloween 2018 and Sinister 2. Right, and he didn't. I didn't watch Dragon Wars D War, but he apparently edited that as well. Wow. I mean, I don't think anybody could have made that movie look good, so I don't blame him for that. Now. The special effects are good. The, there's some really effective gore and such. And. Yeah, you know, like by today, you know, a, a slasher movie isn't going to have. Isn't, isn't very likely to have bad effects anymore. There's some really good stunt work as well. And. In Halloween 2018, the mask is perfectly aged 40 years. Like, the, the fact that there's not a single tear of, you know, like, the mask, in reality, like, I, I doubt anyone has a mask that's quite that old. But if they did, there's there would definitely be some rips in, in parts of it. But, you know, the obviously they didn't actually dig out one that had been around 40 years they made a new one and then they you know did it to make it look like it had aged 40 years this one it's you know it starts as the same mask it has that same foundation but there's also some really scary looking burn marks on the mask which is awesome like this, this yeah as it's a really really cool looking you know burns from the from the fire trap at the end of the 2018 movie. And I am going to try to find the jump scares are quite effective and there's some really effective gore. Some creative kills. The music is incredibly effective, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the, the score was composed by Cody Carpenter, John Carpenter, and, I was it, Daniel Davy Davies, yeah, and, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really quickly going to, I'm not going to spend forever on this, but I do just want to point out that John Carpenter's, yeah, John Carpenter composed music for the 2018 Halloween movie, a 2012, I guess, documentary called The Nightmare Isn't Over, The Making of Halloween 2, and a bunch of his own movies, Ghosts of Mars, Vampires, Escape from L.A., Village of the Damned, In the Mouth of Madness, They Live, Prince of Darkness, Big Trouble in Little China, Christine, 
Halloween 3, which he didn't direct, but he did help. I, I want to say he helped write Halloween 2, which he wrote himself. Escape from New York, The Fog, and Halloween 1978. Assault on Precinct 13 and Dark Star. And those are just the ones that I've watched. Actually, yeah, there might be one or two on that list that I haven't watched yet. But He's he's an incredible composer. He's, he's I'm, I'm glad that he's still composing. I don't blame him for no longer writing or directing, but I'm really glad that he's still composing. He did an incredible job. This is this is a really, really compelling score. Like the the score might be the single best thing about it. And yeah, the the you know the the 2018 movie has this redone Halloween theme and I love it. It is intense, aggressive, atmospheric, terrifying. It's like the music is stabbing your ears, but in a good way. And this movie has another, you know, a redone, redone version. And... So the, the, the sound design, like the kills sound and look really gruesome there's some effective black and blue comedy it's a very bleak movie now the movie is if if you don't count the end credits the movie is about an hour and 43 minutes long Now, the 2018 film had some build-up before, so Michael Kill anyone on screen it worked really well. This one does jump, does get there quicker, and there's a lot more. Like there's there's a ton of on-screen kills in this by by Michael, and I do think that that does work for this movie. And I actually, it's also. Like, based on the reviews, I thought it was going to be more than it was, or that it was, or that when I watched it, I would feel like it was excessive. I mean, I can't really claim that it's not excessive, but it's, like, I would say, you know, if, if, like, if a, f on a scale of 1 to 10, if, five is where you should be if that's how many kills a slasher movie should have which sounds really dark but bear with me then it other people made it sound like it was a 15 where i would say it was like it was a seven maybe an eight you know it it definitely didn't need to go as as far as it did, and it's definitely trying to, like, yeah, I have a few more other things to say about the violence, but I'll get to it in a little bit. The movie fares pretty well on diversity. There's black people, gay people, women, uh, an interracial couple. It features an autistic ventriloquist playing, well, a ventriloquist. I th is that the movies, like, I, I heard that there's gonna, there's like these new rules where if you want to win an Oscar, you have to have at least one person that qualifies as, you know, is it disabled or, I, f I f don't remember the exact, I, I can't help but wonder if that's why there's an autistic control. I thought he was good, like, I'd watch his show, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he seemed really talented and really fun. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a talent show. In, in the movie, we, we see a little bit of, of a few people's acts, and he's one of them. I actually, I saw some, you know, some someone say, oh, you know, I guess Michael is, is a bigot because he's killing gay people. And I'm just like, no, there are gay people in the movie because it's a recent movie. And by now, it's like, okay, come on, let's let's have some diversity, please, you know. And Michael kills pretty much anyone he gets near it's not you know he doesn't he doesn't spare straight people so it's not no there's anyway i 
I would say that the the best element of the movie is either going to be the I mean for a lot of people it's going to be the the gory kills and the yeah just you know like it feels like a Halloween movie it doesn't feel like a you know the 2018 movie had a lot of things that were a lot that were like the 1978 one the like slight twists on that and this one doesn't feel like it's just you know th this one doesn't feel like they took one of the other movies and just moved a few things around <laughs> yeah that makes it sound like i don't like i love the night the the 2018 movie but i'm saying this one I f yeah like like you know like I mentioned earlier, the 2018 one, that was them saying, we're fans, you can trust us, we love these, you know, we love the original movie just as much as you do as a fan of the series, we just want to scare you, is that cool, you know, can, can we, can we crash, can we hang, we're not gonna, like, screw everything up, we just want to have some fun. And we think we can deliver something you're going to love, you know. And when the answer was a resounding yes, please, more, you know, then they were like, okay, let's let's try something a little different. And yeah, it, it feels like a Halloween movie, but it's unpredictable. And it's it's been a really long time since that was the case, you know. Again, I love the 2018 one. I wouldn't call it unpredictable, you know, it's, it's like a lot of things in, and that was almost kind of the fun thing about it, you know, it was like, it's, it's kind of like if you, it's, it's like if there was a, a video game you, you played years ago, and then they put out like a remaster or something, you know, it's not entirely the same thing, and, you know, certainly, some things are a little different than you remember, but you had some fun, you know. But it's it's not it's not a completely different thing. And then this is like, you know, a um a, a really creative person comes in to, to the development team and is like, okay, let's make something wild. It's gonna be long, but it's gonna be very different, you know. The worst aspect of the movie is the the it is it is a bit uneven and it definitely has some like it has things to say but it's not always 100% certain what it wants to say and it doesn't always say it in the most like you know i've i've over over the the last several days i've read this is not an exaggeration a little over at least 200 maybe more reviews not and some of them are really short i'm not saying all of them are long and some of them are just like user reviews and it's just like i like when they did this the end you know but a lot of different people take a lot of different things from the message of the movie and that doesn't necessarily mean that you didn't do a good enough job communicating. And some some people felt that it was preachy, you know. So it's it's difficult. It's a difficult balance, but it definitely has some some issues. I yeah. One one thing I I saw one person say that you know the Halloween fandom does not want a message movie. That is not the right and you know that is ultimate. Like it's one thing when. Like, uh, Candyman 2021 having a message. I mean, the 1992 Candyman definitely also has a message. You know, so it's some, some horror movies are really conducive to it. But, you know, the 1978 one didn't really have one. And the 2018 one didn't especially either. So the fact that this, you know, I mean, the Rob Zombie ones... I, I think an argument could be made that, you know, he, the, there was a message that, like, you know, you, you, like, 
the people around Michael failed him. And that's why he snapped. And in the, the second one, there's probably something about, like, the the connection like when when uh, what's the word like a family connection genetic connection kind of thing but you know, by and large they don't really have the, these are not message movies you know they're they're just they're scary stories and yeah it, it's it's you know that's the thing like if you when you when you do a thing like this 40 years ago you could just have a guy going around killing people and no one would be like well where's the message what is this about you know but when you do it today yeah there's an expectation you know i already mentioned like us and candy man 2021 are slasher movies but they have something to say they're not just you know okay let's have one person going around stabbing a bunch of people and then you know other people try to survive you know there's there's more to it and yeah halloween is not that conducive to that kind of thing now the thing i was most worried about before watching the movie would be that the writers and director didn't have more interesting things to bring to the franchise after the 2018 one and i would say the movie exceeded my expectations and I was most looking forward to just a genuine Halloween experience again. And yeah, the movie lived up to my expectations. I'm not sure I would say it exceeded them. Now, the movie is entertaining to watch and it is good as a whole. Now... The, the trailer does give too the, the yeah the trailers do give too much away I yeah the the You know, the, the abridged script, the editing room's abridged script for the 2018 Halloween movie points out that the, let's see, yeah, the, the only kind of scary shot the movie has is one that's spoiled in the trailer. And the inventive death scenes and scary reveals are also all in the trailer. The cover and poster do not give too much away and give you a pretty good idea of if you like it or not. The, the trailers do also give you a good idea of whether you like it or not. And you know, if you if you watch the trailer and you're like, oh great, that spoiled all the gore. No, there's plenty of gore that you did not see in the trailers. So this has the 39% on the tomato meter. I think it started at like 50, 59. I've never seen it. I Every time I've checked, it's been rotten. But the more reviews come out, the further down it goes. I did not note how the audience score changed last time I checked it was 70% with over 2,500 verified ratings um, yeah I'm just briefly gonna read the the critics consensus is Halloween kills should satisfy fans in search of brute slasher kill thrills but in terms of advancing the franchise it's a bit less than the sum of its bloody parts the audience says Halloween kills doesn't do much to move the Mike Myers saga forward Reviewers looking for hardcore horror violence won't be disappointed. But yeah, 39% based on 185 reviews, which means that 113 of them are rotten. And 
On Metacritic, it has a rating of 42 out of 100 and a user rating of 5.7 out of 10. And the there are there were 43 meta yeah critics on Metacritic and 71 user reviews. And on IMDb, it has 6.0 out of 10. 1,057 user reviews, 186 links in the IMDb external reviews section. I was able to read 139. I think the rest of them just weren't in languages I speak. I'm not sure there were any dead links, but then, yeah, for, for such recent ones. But, yeah, gradually as more users have voted on IMDb, the user rating has gone lower, even though a lot of people vote 7 out of 10, which makes a lot of sense. But yeah, 27,746 MDB users voted, and let's see. Yeah, 17.6% gave it 7, 17.6% gave it 6, 12% gave it 5. 6% gave it a, a 1 out of 10, so, yeah. So, there is a lot of violence and gore. I was worried if it was going to get numbing. I mean, I... I would definitely say that the movie tries too hard at that, but I... I would say a... a good chunk of it was still very effective, not numbing or, or tedious, but yes, yeah, so some of it maybe was, and, and you know, keeping in mind, I love gory movies, The Thing and the Fly, Cronenberg version, yeah, The Thing, John Carpenter version, The Fly, Cronenberg version, are some of my favorite horror movies, and The Thing is one of my favorite movies in general, but, yeah, right, the... Kyle Richards, who plays Lindsay Wells, apparently didn't want to show her offspring the 1978 original because of the minuscule amount of nudity that it features. That was apparently too much for her. But she did show her... I forget if it's this one or the 2018 one. Maybe both. Because they don't have nudity. They only have extreme gore. Holy crap, Americans have issues. It's way worse to show someone too young to cope with it violence than sex. And, and she did say, oh, you know, she, she freaked out. Wow. I mean, even if you wanted to be like, I mean, just find someone who can, who can slightly edit the 1978 one. There's not that much nudity. But yeah, the, the... Like, um, basically, the the gore, like it all, you know, so, some critics said that it felt like, like David Gordon Green doesn't like horror movies and wants to make the audience feel guilty about watching a violent horror movie or something, and. You know, if so, it didn't work on me, but I, I agree, I did get that sense. It did feel oddly, like, like very, very sadistic and kind of, and, and like, the movie Planet Terror shows, like, a bunch of, like, like, some of it is, like, I want to say, like, venereal disease. Uh, symptoms, you know, Im images of that, just to gross out the viewer, and it's it's almost like like Robert Rodriguez is essentially doing parody of the kind, of, you know, let's just show something super gross, and it felt like that that this movie was doing that and didn't and wasn't in on the joke, you know, that like there's a, you know, Laurie has to have some some surgery because of the, or they uh, they have to give her stitches. I've, I've yeah, something like that, because she was stabbed, you know. And the movie shows the operation as, like, really gory detail, and it's like, 
I guess it just wants to show anything it can that's that's like violent and such. And I there's there was a point where like they were like wheeling bodies into the, the hospital and I half expected a character to like lift the sheet or something to, to show us some more gore. Which almost kind of sort of did happen just a little bit later. So yeah. But I do really appreciate, as others have pointed out, the movie does like it's not just showing a lot of gore and violence it shows characters like grieving and mourning like you'll you'll see a character realize that someone they love is dead and like it it hurts them you know where a lot of these movies like it's supposed to be just like fast food you know you're just supposed to see a gory death scene and then just move on to the next thing we're not supposed to think of the characters as as like real they're just supposed to be, like yeah so i appreciate that this one does try to and it often works like there were a lot of the, the death scenes where i really didn't want the the character to die and like it was unpleasant to see them die and that you know that is the idea of a horror movie it's it's the catharsis of going through that kind of experience in you know yeah uh, outside of reality in a in a place where it doesn't you know when when the credits roll you can leave and you know it'll no longer be true kind of thing so i recommend this movie to anyone who enjoyed the 2018 one and i give this seven memorable gruesome gory kills out of ten and holy crap i've gone on for a long time what can i say the movie yeah it it's i liked it a lot and that brings us to the thought sections disclaimers is the first thought section so if you don't care about these disclaimers, try to keep them short and relevant, but your mileage may vary. You can skip right ahead to the section of your choice in the description box. I often try to talk very fast during the disclaimers. Since a lot of it is very standard information, I'm not going to keep speaking as fast as I sometimes do during this section once I get into the rest of the video itself. With that said, please do note that some of the specific discussion of the movie may be in this section. So, once again, final warning. From here on out, spoilers. I will no longer be warning before I spoil this movie. If I spoil anything other than the Halloween movies, then I will verbally warn, hold them in and it's finished all I do. And so, let's see. Am I glad this is a sequel? I do think that the... the Yeah, it, it was like seeing... I, I agree with those critics who said that it doesn't always work but seeing this movie where like the entirety of Haddonfield rises up and wants to stop Michael, the the idea that all of them have hurt are are hurt so badly by all his killings, yeah, that that really I I haven't seen another horror movie do it, and it it worked. You know, again, like so many of these movies, like the the kills are just completely disposable. You know, it's it's yeah, it's, it's like fast food. You're you're. I mean, if if you watch a good horror movie, ideally you care about the character and seeing them die. Yeah, like like I mentioned, there's this cathartic thing to it. But for a lot of these movies, yeah, they just they show a lot of deaths. And. Yeah, this this did a pretty good job of not being just ah yeah, just having a lot of yeah, a lot of deaths without any consequences. So, the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of well thoughts, some is analysis, some is MST MST3K retract and other jokes, etc. 
And yeah, so the time codes for all the sections are in the description box. The section right after this one is thoughts ahead about watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or like the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. And right, so does the movie appear to have empathy for the least likable characters? I mean, I think Michael is probably the only character that the movie has no empathy for at all. I think everybody, like, even, I have to admit, I'm not, if you had asked me right after, I for the first time I watched the 2018 Halloween movie, will Cameron, wait, ah, uh, Cameron, is that the actor, or is that the, no, I think his name was Cameron. Yeah, Will Cameron. Okay, I'm just going to come out and say it. So that in case I'm wrong, I'm referring to Allison's ex-boyfriend. Will he redeem himself? Like, if you were to ask me right after, I would have been like, oh, probably not, no. But, yeah, they, they try. Like, at times in this, he is a jerk, but he does try to... Yeah, you know, it's that thing of, like, sometimes crisis brings out the best in people, and, yeah, you know, when, when push comes, like, he, you know, he, he spots a guy just lying on the ground, he's like, yo, you okay? You okay, dude? Yeah, okay. He walks, oh, holy shit, uh, dude, I'm coming, I'm coming, you're gonna be okay, I'm gonna help you, you know, and he, he runs over, help, somebody help me, you know, just, yeah. Like, I hadn't guessed that that was where his character would go next after the last time we saw him, but it didn't feel like, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be character assassination if it's a good thing. What's the opposite of an assassination? Character resurrection? I, I think they, I don't think it goes against what he did, the, the characterization in the, in the 2018 movie. I mean, uh, clearly, sometimes he does things that are nice. Otherwise, Allison wouldn't be with him. It's just that when he drinks, he gets belligerent. And, yeah. So, let's see. Right. Some, some of these movies don't have very high opinion of women. But, yeah, you know, I mean, Allison and Karen... You know, Laurie ultimately doesn't get to do very much, but yeah, I mean, Karen, she managed to lure Michael into a trap. Allison goes out there to avenge her father. Yeah, you know, the... the ultimately, you know, both of them do also make mistakes, but, you know, I don't think there's a single character in this movie does that doesn't make at least one big mistake at some point in the movie. I wish that they were exempt, but I'm not going to claim that, you know, obviously, sadly, it does, like, when a woman does something wrong, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, all women are bad. Well, when a man does the, the exact same thing bad, a lot of guys are like, oh, I mean, he's just a guy. What are you going to do? Of course he's going to do something wrong. It's not a big deal. So... You know, but, but yeah, I mean, Karen comes the closest to, if, if not for her, then, th you know, there would have been absolutely no chance of them stopping Michael. Yeah. And I have to admit, you know, I loved seeing in the trailer that, here's your, you know, what is it she said? She says, uh... Here's your, here's your mask, Michael. Come and get it. Something like that, you know. When I saw, I've I've seen that trailer like twenty times by now. I did not see coming that it would lead to this big. Like he's surrounded by maybe twenty people who like hit him and try to shoot him at all these things, you know. And that was a really epic, like kind of a f la uh, last stand. I, yeah. Now, let's see. right, 
my making jokes on this should not necessarily be taken as me thinking the thing I'm joking about is actually bad, me wanting to make light of the subject, etc. Simply finding very difficult not to misdemean, overanalyze everything I watch. And that brings us. Let's see. Right, a few things that I. Yeah. That brings us to the next section. Notes taken while watching. I really appreciate that this movie acknowledges that vigilantes is made up of angry mobs very frequently get the wrong guy, even when they're right that someone needs to stop the guy they're after. And I had heard a rumor that in this movie, it turns out that Michael Myers doesn't care about Laurie Strode. And I, yeah, I wrote that must sting. I appreciate that detail because technically we don't know for sure if he does care. But what it was was that the the the, the cop told Lori the reason that Michael got to where he was wasn't because of her. It was the doctor who manipulated the situation. Now, let's see. so yeah, I I wanted to briefly say you know some some people said well why. Why do the why do they get the wrong guy? The you know don't they know that Michael is so and so tall and you know and and like fit and such and this other guy is like short and overweight and such. But that's the thing though they don't they like they're going completely on on instinct that they're not thinking about what they're actually really really doing they just they feel like if they if they stop then someone is going to die and at that point you know i mean i f i feel like for for that just just stop and actually think like think about the the january 4th rioters you know the they literally marched chanting hang Mike Pence like do you really think that they were thinking rationally about like hypothetically let's say that they managed to hang him what good would that even have done it was just that Trump was upset that Pence didn't do the thing that he didn't he couldn't even legally have done and so he wanted revenge because he's petty like that it's one of his laundry list it's you know it's yeah it's it's one of his many character defects of the, of the long laundry list of character defects and but they chanted it they didn't just think it and try to do it they they said it out loud repeatedly you know because that's what that's what that kind of thing can devolve to if they really feel passionately about it and that's what was going on there in in both the movie and in uh, yeah in the mob in the movie and in the January fourth riots I yeah the first first note I took was the really excellent foreboding music at the opening and right I you know it was a decent idea to open it on. Cameron not yet knowing about Michael, you know, and he, he calls Oscar, and we get a brief shot of, because the movie can't, you know, the movie will add gore wherever it can, so it includes the shot of that little bit of gore of Oscar from the 2018 movie, and we see that Hawkins is not dead. A lot of people had guessed that he was dead when you know, before watching this movie, when they, you know, when they summed up the events of the 2018 one, they said, so Hawkins dies, and we go to the 1978 flashback bit, and we see that Lonnie was bullied, and I, I have to admit, I didn't really think about it, but, yeah, very likely, you know, a lot of bullies were bullied themselves, and... Yeah. 
right? And and the yeah, one of the cops goes in. You know, they're in the Myers house, and he he spots the dog, and because it's this movie and it needs to add gore wherever it can, you know. We we don't just like in in the in the seventy eight film. I, do we even see? I'm not sure we even see that there is a a dog that they just look and say a dead dog. You know, it's, it's not verbatim, but yeah, you know. But in this, you see like blood and entrails and such. And yeah, one of the cops is like, he killed a dog or something like that. And the other cops like, what was that? Nothing. Uh, it's, yeah, I am a C3K. It was it was for the audience's benefit. I liked that we didn't always know where Michael, you know, is or goes in the the seventy eight one, and yeah, that that bit with like, you know, he stands there and looks out, and then Michael shows up and attacks him. You know, that book and that book ends the movie. That's what happens to Karen at the end of the movie, standing in that exact same spot, and then Michael pops out and and brutally kills. The person and I, th I'm, mm, yeah, I'm. I'm not really gonna comment on. Like, like I said in the review, just you know, watch the heavy spoilers video on the ending. I don't really have anything to add to his. It's an interesting theory. I, I would just be restating what he, and I'd really rather give him the, the traffic. You know, his his channel is substantially bigger than mine. He doesn't need me sending, but nevertheless, I when I when I see something good, I try to call attention to it. I liked that the the flashback bit ends with us seeing like a lot of guns. You know, a lot of cops. Like there's maybe ten cops or something, all pointing their guns directly at Michael, and he just doesn't move just you know they got that exact like he's not like no, no don't shoot or like giving up or or dis or despairing or making them look really bad or no just he's just standing there like how how inhuman is that to have that many guns pointed at you and just be stand like like he he's standing still as if like someone if if like his his movement is when someone presses play and they just oh pause and he's just he's just standing there he's just he's just standing there and it's it's unbearable you just want him to do something human move or say something or have a reaction just yeah and yeah the the i already mentioned the, the excellent opening credits with the flaming jack o lanterns and the first time we, you know, we, we don't know that they're survivors of, of 78 from right away. At first, we just know, oh, they're loud. And Tommy's really bringing the house down with his act. And not, not yeah, the other kind of bringing the house down. And what does that say? Uh, I'm just going to I like the intercutting between the Strode women. I, I liked how, you know, there, there was this bit where, like, one of the hospital workers was like, "I really think you should, you should see, you know, you should get treatment or something, see a see a doctor or something like that." And she's like, "It's not my blood." And then it cuts to, you know, washing the the blood off the the hands. But the person it cuts, you know, then but it cut from Allison talking about blood on her to Karen washing blood off her. You know, I, I like that the movie doesn't spend, like, a really long time. Yeah. But combines the, the two intercuts. 
and right i noted that maybe the reason that you know th this is the most sadistic we've seen michael but this is also like he you know he was he was being burned so uh, i don't know maybe you know what what's what's the what's the saying uh uh you know preheat oven put the put the thing in and just you know heat cook until you know un until it's yeah uh, uh, yeah until it has the right consistency that you yeah i don't know is that too dark is is it possible to have too dark of a joke for this movie i thought it was kind of nice that like lonnie like he's he's very supportive of cameron and his costume like you know he sees that that cameron calls him and he's like hey so what how's it going what well, let me think it was like Bonnie and Clyde was what they were, right? And he was dressed as Bonnie, so he's like, "How's it going? How how is Bonnie?" or some something like that. Just you know, like we know that Allison wasn't okay with Karen and Ray knowing that it was gender bent, Bonnie and Clyde. But apparently, Lonnie knows, and he's like, "Ah, oh, that's great. I, I like that." And let's see. Hmm. Oh, right, right. Yeah, the, the, you know, they think Michael is in the car. And so Tommy attacks with the bat. But, you know, we realize it's actually the, the other escaped mental patient. And we, you know, there's that bit. I don't know if, if it's supposed to be subtle or I guess that depends on who you ask but yeah the at the opening of 2018 Halloween we see multiple different uh, ah, me yeah mental yeah me mentally ill patients at this place and one of them has an umbrella and then in this one, we see that one again, and he, you know, he left behind the umbrella. I, I, right now, I don't remember exactly where he left it behind, but yeah, you know, so, and, and as far as I can tell, it's the same actor and everything. And I, I, I quite liked Little John and Big John. I thought they were very, very charming, very, I, you know, seeing them together. I like that. And, <clears throat> yeah, so there's that bit about, like, some kids come up and claim that they found that there was a razor blade in some of the candy that they got at their house. And so they, of course, feel very guilty and try to help. And then, you know, it was a trick to so they could steal candy, steal the whole bowl of candy. And so the Johns try to scare them by saying, you know, this is Michael Myers' house, and I don't know, I, the kids deserved it after what they pulled. It was, yeah. Yeah, I liked them intercutting the, the two Strode women talking to cops. And, you know, we see Allison recalling clips of 2018, wishing she was still in that movie. Rather than this one, and it was pretty dark when when like they ask Lonnie Elam, "Do you have permits for these guns?" Some of them, and that is of course like a lot of horror movies get very conservative when it's like you know ah you gotta the it's the only way to solve the the problem is is with violence and such, but. But then, I mean, ultimately, they don't kill Michael Myers in this. And in fact, they they do actively get people killed that would, like, 
there's that guy who had is is the maybe the one who goes to dressed as a doctor or something you know he's got the gun and he tries to attack Michael with it but then Michael like did he like slam the door maybe and then he ends up shooting himself which you know that is yeah that's that's a pro gun control message right there you might accidentally shoot yourself or something you care about And yeah, the we meet the kids again. You know, this part was also uh, did appear in at least one trailer where they're like, oh, you know, there's this creepy guy with a with a mask who keeps trying to play hide and seek with us. And you know, seeing it in the movie, especially when it's like these kids are really obnoxious and they they are way too high. I I feel like they're probably on a sugar rush. They they're way too too yeah they they gotta come back down off that but let's see and yeah there's some they're they're shooting wildly and you know the the nurse who worked with Luna she you know she emptied the revolver like he did but she didn't hit anything with with any of the, so so that's a, a neat little twist on on that. And Lindsay hit Michael repeatedly with this bag full of bricks. That was quite nicely done. And she hid from Michael. And Jamie Lee Curtis gets, you know, she doesn't get that much screen time and that much to do, but she's real great whenever she's on screen. And let's see. right, and and the yeah, I don't I don't even remember who said, but someone said to Lindsay, "You're gonna be okay, Lindsay. Say the goddamn words." And I don't remember who you know. Someone said, knock it off, but why? Mike wouldn't knock it off because he's crazy and off his rocker. And, yeah, it's, you know, Lori's, it's like her, her stitches come undone. And both Laurie and the uh, and the cop blame themselves, which is also really, you know, yeah, that sadly does happen all too often. You know, instead of like the healthy thing to do would be to say it is not our fault. We did the best we could, you know. But no, they they're both like, I sh this is my fault. I could have stopped this. And and Karen tries to protect the the other mental patient that the one that they're mistaking for Michael Myers. I will say, you know, there's that bit where one of them says, "Well, he wore a mask. How can we be sure this isn't him when he always wore a mask?" And that really, I think, I hope for the next one they they stop pretend like. We, the viewer, haven't really seen Michael Myers' face. Not for very long. Only, only, just a, you know, very, very brief, and like, out of, uh, what's it called? Out of focus and that kind of thing. But obviously the characters in this universe have seen his face. He hasn't been wearing the mask constantly for all these, you know, this is not like Black Mask, where the, you know, some, some versions of Black Mask, like, the mask is literally burned into his skin. It was a latex mask. They pulled it off. His face has been seen countless times by the people who deal with him. You know, so it's not that they they gotta they gotta stop pretending like the characters in the movie, the movie's universe, wouldn't have seen his face. Just don't show it to us and try to keep a little mystique, but don't outright say that nobody knows what he looks like. And this kind of just it. 
it doesn't work. I, you know, obviously, it's a horror movie. There's got to be a certain suspension of disbelief. That one's just too far. No, it, it, if everybody finds it awkward when, when you do it. Please stop. And the the mental patient actually, you know, commits suicide. He jumps from from this really high, yeah. And one of the cops, you know, protects the the I, f I forget the the name, but the the guy who accidentally shot the other cop. And it was I I don't know like. <clears throat> Is it because the th I I don't I have to admit I don't really know where they were going with that. Are they trying to like defend cops who are charged with you know being brutal? It's not always a gun and it's not always murder, but you know is yeah. Are the are the filmmakers trying to absolve? responsibility from cops charged with being brutal towards you know yeah in innocent people <coughs> <coughs> by like saying oh they're they're doing their best kind of thing or yeah i i don't i don't really know what they were trying to go for there and yeah so so Lonnie, Cameron, and Allison go to Michael Myers' house, figuring that he'll go there. And, of course, Lonnie goes in alone. It's, it's just, like, if Lonnie feels bad about taking these teenagers there, like, why does he just, like... It's 2018. Are you telling me? Okay. Apparently, Allison's, you know, phone hasn't worked since the 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 pudding incident. Was was it pudding? I'm not 100% certain what it was, but you know, I can buy that. But I know for a fact that the Elams have working cell phones. You know why I know? Because they called... Cameron called Lonnie earlier in the movie. That's why they're even in the same place right now. So why doesn't... If Lonnie doesn't want for the these two teenagers to be this close to Michael Myers, why doesn't he call someone and tell them to come pick them up? I get... Obviously, if he drives them away, then he isn't going into Meyer's place, which is what he has this traumatic thing about. Like, he feels like he should be going into Meyer's place. It's his, it's his responsibility to stop Michael Myers. But it just... And and then afterwards, the two teenagers split up. And and I don't know what Allison... Th you know, she, she goes up to this, this dead body, and then she digs a, a knife. I mean... Okay, so the idea is they want her to have a knife when she comes at Michael. That's the point. That's why she pulls the knife out. But why, A, why does she pull the knife out? B, why does she just stay there? They, they expect that Michael is inside the house. And so they, they split up. It makes no sense. Like, why doesn't, like, certainly if she's going to be messing around with the, the bodies there, why doesn't Cameron just stand near her you know it's just it's it's really frustrating and it's it's a character that we've seen be smart before and but yeah i liked allison versus michael i like karen versus michael and yeah karen running away from michael with the mask in her hand you know her cell phone in the other calling the cops, to, yeah, so the, the joke doesn't work when there's actually a danger. And, yeah, Michael Myers versus this armed mob, that was quite good. And I liked, you know, the, the trap is sprung with the, the mask, and Karen again says, gotcha. 
I'm actually, I have a, I, if, if you look in the descri description box, I am, you know, c circulating a petition to have Judy Greer appear at the end of every horror movie from now on where she, like, pretends to be, like, weak or, or frail or something, and then says, gotcha, and we realized there was actually a trap for the, for the evil, be I just, if you, I'd, I'd be very grateful if you would sign it and pass it on, because that's something that needs to happen, I, I am, it, it gives me life to see in movies, and just, it, yeah, I, I, it's, it's amazing, I, I, yeah, and, yeah, the the whole bit with like the 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 fight, you know, Michael managing to kill all these people, and you know he kills Tommy, and I really liked, you know, we we cannot see his eyes, and I I think they almost must have used like CG to to make it completely, or is there maybe did they put something covering his eyes that he can see through, but that keeps it dark, but it just yeah, I I really really like that. And Michael kills Karen as she looks out the window. And, yeah, it's, you know. Ultimately, I don't think Laurie needed more to avenge. Needed more of a reason. But, yeah, that's definitely gonna, like... Yeah, she, she really... I'm 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 very excited for the the third part, and I yeah I I hope they manage to one more time just like with with both of these movies they managed to deliver something that was very different like the 2018 movie it's not just the like, the, the 1998 movie, it's way too similar to the 1978 movie. It doesn't, like, it's just a quick thing. Like, the, like the 1998 movie realizes, I mean, Laurie Strode, she would have PTSD. But it doesn't, it doesn't have the, 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 the guts to just really dive deep. But the 2018 one does. Like, she is it's 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 uncomfortable to watch it's and in in the in the good way i mean it's 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 a really powerful yeah you know like if if you're going to bring back laurie strode yeah it should be something that powerful you know don't don't bring her back and oh she she kind of drinks a lot of wine i guess she occasionally thinks she sees michael's reflection in in you know windows and such no, have it be that she's she's not functioning. You know, they took her kid away, you know, from her. They she she's what was it, twice divorced and, and all this stuff, you know, that's the kind of thing that and and then with this one they have this this mob and the We we need more movies that point out because cause so many movies make it seem like vigilante justice, that's the solution. You know, the the for sure, I agree. There are problems that the police are not doing a good job solving. But vigilante justice is extremely dangerous. And yeah, you know, so I really appreciate that. I agree with those who say, you know, it's it gets a little confused. The the movie doesn't quite yeah, but but no, I'm I'm hopeful for the third one. This movie was a lot better than than a lot of the negative reviews made it sound. But yeah, that is absolutely everything that I had to say. So if you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video we watch on the screen right about now. 
I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and recently these videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording and I will catch you next time.